Hello guys, how are you? It's Megan Graham. Welcome to Yorkie Storytime Live. And I've got a Yorkie or two waiting behind me to be groomed as well, who is on with me today. I'm so excited to talk to you guys and I feel like I have so much to talk to you about. I'm just per usual adjusting my computer a little bit because I want to show you guys the dogs instead of just me. I think I could even adjust it a little bit more. Are you gonna be first, Poppy? So love to hear who's on today, who is watching and where are you watching from? We've got Poppy who's going to be groomed first. Um, so for those of you that haven't been on, um, I was looking for an at-home groomer because I had heard something kind of weird about the place that I was going. Um, a dog had had a health problem while it was being boarded there and I guess it didn't really get the medical attention that it needed. Hello, Karen. It's so nice to see you. Hello from Minnesota and hello from Boston. So look at Poppy. We had our first experience with the at-home groomer and it was amazing. I'm so happy about it. Let's adjust our little grooming supplies here. Hello, Amelia. How are you? Oh, so cool. You're in Fresno, California. How is your weather there? I'm always so curious. I feel like California has the most beautiful weather. I'm going to take out Poppy's a little, um, her little ponytail. Um, so the at-home groomer came to groom my dogs the other day, and it was really hard to find someone. I did an ad on Indeed, and um, I got a lot of replies that I felt like were very, very low effort. And I'm pretty used to hiring employees and I really just never, I never answer anyone that seems like they don't care from the beginning because I've noticed that in life, if people don't care in the beginning, they definitely don't care in the middle and they care even less in the end. So anyway, I found this young lady that is a professional groomer and she loves the place where she's working, but she is looking to supplement her income because she's saving for a house. And um, anyway, she came for the first visit. Um, what morning did she come? Monday morning at 10 a.m. And oh my gosh, the dogs look so good. She did such a good job grooming them. And they're so, so happy. Um, hello there. How are you? Um, oh my gosh. Sorry that I'm looking so much at, at your name and it's hard for me. Is it, do I say it? Is the P and the H pronounced like an F? Is it Mufo? I'm not sure. So I'm so sorry that I don't know how to say your name, but it says watching from South Africa and love your channel, Megan. Thank you so much. And thanks for watching. South Africa is such a beautiful place. And one of my best friends is actually from there. His name is Zane and he has the most lovely, lilting, relaxing accent I have ever heard. Um, so the groomer came over on Monday morning and Monday morning was a little bit hectic because I felt like I was getting the house ready to have, you know, someone in the house. So I cleaned our second bathroom. So it was totally, totally fresh for her. I put in um, fresh washcloths so she could just use a fresh washcloth every time and not feel like she needs to use our hand towel, which I always feel like is kind of gross when you're visiting somewhere, especially now. And, um, we fed the dogs, we got them all ready, took them for a little walk. And then um, her name is Maria and Maria came in and the dogs just, they just loved her right away. And I don't know if you can see, Poppy needs a little brushing as we often do for Yorkie Storytime Live. But um, Maria just knew exactly what to do for their grooming. And she, she was so gentle with them. Um, it was so nice for them to be able to be washed with their own products instead of, you know, just anything that they might have in the grooming salon. Um, she did it in the kitchen, which I will say, I did some major, major cleanup in my kitchen after because man, those little hairs really travel from the grooming. Um, but the dogs were so happy. And I think that the thing that was so different is that I was there first of all. So it was a little bit more effort on my part because I kind of like prepped the dogs and made sure they were brushed out extra well. Um, and I just took whoever wasn't being groomed on a little walk around the park so that they would get some extra exercise. 
Um, but there really was no stress for the dogs. She did say that Lola tried to bite her. Um, for those of you that don't know, Lola is my toothless dog. And so she tried to bite, well, she tried to bite her scissors and she snapped at her. Um, so she said she really went easy on her legs and she didn't do what she considered to be a perfect job on Lola because she just wanted her to get used to, um, bless you, Poppy. She just wanted her to get used to being groomed by her. Um, I honestly thought that Lola looked so, so perfect and getting her groomed in our home as opposed to outside of our home was just so much better because the dogs usually have sort of like symptoms from the stress of being, they're usually away for about eight hours when they go to the grooming salon. So anyway, if you guys have an option like this, it was so, and if you have stressed out dogs, it was a really, really nice um, way to do it. Hello, Lorena, how are you? It says hello from Wheaton, Illinois, Western suburb of Chicago. I just got my little girl, Yorkie, two and a half weeks ago. Her name is Frankie. I love that name, that's so cute. Frankie must be a tomboy. And Mira says, hi, watching from Canada. Hello, Mira, thank you so much for joining us. It's so nice to see you guys on today. Um, I did not do a live stream on Sunday as I usually do because it was Mother's Day. And we actually, um, I talked to my mom on Mother's Day. We didn't go home on Mother's Day because my husband lost his really sweet mom. So my mother-in-law passed away two months ago from pancreatic cancer. And um, she was an angel. She was not what anyone would ever think of as a mother-in-law. She was just the kindest, sweetest, um, most welcoming. She always, she told me that she felt lucky that I had met her son because he could be loved the way that he deserved to be loved. Um, so anyway, that was what happened. It just happened back in January. And so I thought it might be easier on my husband not to go see my mom on Mother's Day just because I know he's really missing his mom. And I felt bad that I have a mom right now. And, you know, and, and he still does have a mom, but then obviously she's not alive. So we did some different things and just spent a lot of time together and went to the park with the babies and things like that. Um, so I'm sorry it wasn't on my live stream, but I hope that for those moms out there that you guys all had the wonderful day that you deserve to have. Lisa says, and hello, Lisa. It says, hi, Megan, long time, but I've been watching in my spare time. I hope you are all doing well. Milo is much better with his grooming. I think it's because she does it in our laundry room. That's so great, Lisa. I think it's such a great idea if you can have it done in your home. I, I mean, my dogs haven't had any stress symptoms. Um, I was tired because I was like doing a lot of stuff and I did the cleanup and things, but I would much rather do more work myself and have it here and just know that everything is safe and good. And, um, you know, they, she took excellent care of the dogs. I just loved her. Um, so Lisa, we are doing really well. Um, I was a little off this week. I wasn't feeling my very, very best. I'm not sick. It's just my weird autoimmune stuff that I deal with sometimes, but um, I'm feeling a lot better now. And the dogs are doing really well, as is the cat. And um, my, Jeff is just at the gym right now, so he might come home at some point during our filming. So you guys might see my husband. Um, hello, Dipti. How are you? Dipti says, hi, Megan. The babies are looking so cute. The groomer did a great job. She really did, Dipti. She's so talented. I honestly didn't expect to love the grooming as much as I did, but she did such a good job and they just looked exactly the way that I wanted them to look. Um, Mira says, you have a Yorkie just like mine. Oh, that's so cute. And Bentley just turned 10. That's awesome. And such a great name too, Mira. I just love them so much. Yorkies are my favorite dogs. Um, and Lisa says, I totally agree with you, but I still bathe him once a week and try to do a little bath and tidy. Um, absolutely. And mine get bathed every single Saturday as well. Um, but I think that, it, you know, I know it's not always possible to find a groomer that can do it in your home, but it was so nice because she also used a handheld special blow dryer just for dogs. Um, I know that sometimes the groomers, um, I didn't know this for a long time, but they sometimes use a uh, crate blow dryer, which is um, very, very hard on them. So um, I think it was just so great to have someone in. Guys, if you're just joining, please don't forget to hit the like button. Um, it means so much to YouTube. It will tell them to show my videos a little bit more and things like that. So I really appreciate it. Um, so it was so funny. I did, I did a really great, well, I thought it was really great, but I did a jeans review um, this past week because I bought some athletic, I don't know, they're like 
jeans, but they're jeggings, they're jean leggings. And I was so excited about them when I got them. They're the most comfortable things I've ever bought. So I wound up buying, I bought one pair and then every time they have my size, I buy other pairs. So now I'm up to four pairs. I'm wearing them now and they're just the most comfortable pants I have ever worn. And I also um, contacted the company to ask if they could make me an affiliate because whenever I feel like I just love an item and I recommend it to a ton of people, I love it if I can become an affiliate because I feel like when I'm not excited about something, I obviously make a good representative for them because I can talk about the product. Um, some people were asking me if they are like Spanx leggings. And I think the thing about Spanx leggings, and this is, I, I just don't like things that compress me because I find them to be uncomfortable. Um, and these don't really compress you. What I really like is they allow room for your figure. So they kind of like have extra curves built in so that they're not uncomfortable. Um, I just feel like anything that I have to wear all day that's like pressing me in or has control top or something, um, it hurts. <laughs> so um, I think there's nothing wrong with having a little curves and um, not pressing yourself in, but they've just been so comfortable. And I wind up wearing them, you know, to the dog park, to work, um, running errands. And even when I'm like cooking at home and doing things. So I feel a little bit cuter because I feel like I was really, I mean, you guys know I was really living in sweatpants. So I haven't been living in sweatpants quite as much because now I'm living in my athletic fit leggings. <laughs> Sorry, guys, just reading the comments here. Um, Lisa says, I'm glad to be here and all you are, and that you are all doing good and you're feeling better. Thanks so much, Lisa. I am feeling a lot better. It just, I just have like weird stuff that happens sometimes when I feel so, so much better. Um, and, and Jasmine says, hi, when will they make Dog Mom Day? Um, I actually got a lot of Happy Mother's Day messages from my friends, which I thought was so nice, Jasmine. So even though I don't have human children, a lot of my friends were like, happy Mother's Day. You're the best dog mom ever. And I thought that was so nice. Um, I think when you're a dog mom, you're still a mom, personally. Um, not everybody has, you know, human children. But I consider, it's okay, Poppy. What's wrong? What's wrong, little baby? Oh, she's making her little coughing sound that she makes sometimes. It's okay. It's okay. What a good girl. I love when her ponytail sticks up like this. It's so cute. Just look at that face. Look at that girl. She looks so great. Um, but so I think we're still moms. Here, you wanna get a little break? You wanna get a little break here? You wanna do a little cough down there? Are you nervous? What's, I just realized that I need to fix her hair because it is across her eye a little bit and that could be, that could be irritating, couldn't it, Poppy? Let me fix that for you, hold on, hold on. I didn't realize that when I was putting it up, but I think that can really bother you. I wouldn't like that either. There you go. That's better. That's so much better, isn't it? There you go. There she is. What a good girl. So Joe Schmidt, Schmidt said, how do you get them so calm when touching their faces? Mine tries to bite anytime we touch his face, even with positive reinforcement. Um, I think it has to be really slow, Joe. And especially if that is happening, happening, I would say don't go right for the face. Um, maybe try more of the body as your dog gets more comfortable um, and just move really slowly, speak really quietly and do it in small increments. Um, you don't have to put them on their backs too. I know that some dogs may not respond well when you're putting them on their backs like I'm doing. So you might do better if you like put a towel down on a table and you brush them that way or something like that. Um, Lisa, I totally agree with you. Um, she said, Jasmine, dog mom day, in my opinion, is every day. And I agree. Um, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. It says, hey, from North Carolina. Hey, back to you. My 13-year-old Yorkie, Izzy, passed away three weeks ago due to renal failure. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. Oh, it says we are burying her on Friday. It really helps me to watch lots of videos of your little babies. Kelly, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, I don't know if you've been on before, but I lost one of my Yorkies that I had for 12 years. Um, his name was Teddy. And if you watch my video about how I got my Yorkie puppies, I have a lot of 
videos of Teddy and pictures of Teddy and things. Um, and losing your baby is just the hardest thing. It's, I mean, I can still cry about missing Teddy. Um, I think it's just making it through day by day. And um, there's a beautiful poem. Um, the poem is called, I believe it's called May I Go. Um, and it's a dog poem. Let me just make sure because I want to, I think it's, it'll make you cry your eyes out, but it is so beautiful. Um, let's see. It's called May I Go and it's a dog poem. Um, it's the most beautiful poem I've ever read. Um, I don't know if I can, if, if this will make anybody too sad, I'm, I'm going to read this poem if that's okay. It's the most gorgeous poem I've ever read. And it, I read it when I put Teddy to sleep. Um, and I think it says everything about losing a pet. So if you guys haven't seen this, definitely don't listen if you don't like sad things, but it's called May I Go Now and it's a poem. And it says, may I go now? May I go now? Do you think the time is right? May I say goodbye to pain-filled days and endless lonely nights. I've lived my life and done my best, an example tried to be. So can I take that step beyond and set my spirit free? I didn't want to go at first. I fought with all my might, but something seems to draw me now to a warm and loving light. I want to go. I really do. It's difficult to stay, but I will try as best I can to live just one more day to give you some time to care for me and share your love and fears. I know you're sad and afraid because I see your tears. I'll not be far, I promise that, and hope you'll always know that my spirit will be close to you wherever you may go. Thank you so for loving me. You know I love you too. That's why it's hard to say goodbye and end this life with you. So hold me now just one more time and let me hear you say, because you care so much for me, you'll let me go today. Um, it's the most beautiful poem I've ever read and it, I feel like it explains, it's by Susan Jackson and for anyone that knows someone that has lost a pet, it's a really nice, it's a really nice thing to share because it just puts into words how our pets, I feel like they just try to stay and protect us and love us and be with us. Um, so anyway, sorry for a sad poem, but I think it's a really beautiful poem because it just describes that relationship and how as much as we care for our dogs and we spend time caring for them, I think that they just wrap us in, our, in their love and they care for us the same way that we care for them, um, maybe even better sometimes. It's just so beautiful. Lisa, that's so sweet of you to say to Kelly, sorry for her loss. As it, and Lorena, thank you so much for saying that. That's so nice of you guys. Thanks for, for joining in and, and saying that. It's really sweet of you guys. I think we've got this little baby, Alfie. So Alfie last week went to work with me every single day. Um, he's been pottying a lot in the house. Um, because of the cat. And I totally understand why, because the cat has just been going after Alfie. So I've been taking him to work with me every single day and he is loving it so much. And my clients are loving it so much. He's getting so much attention. He walks to work with mommy every day. Um, and both Jeff and I have been just giving him a lot of extra attention and extra training because I know that when he has extra accidents in the house and if he's being, I mean, I would say he's being extra naughty, but I think he's also trying to send us a message and he needed a break from the cat. Um, the cat is really sweet, but um, he really needed a little break from the cat. And I think I had that reaction that some of us do sometimes where we feel upset that our dogs are not doing what we want them to do. But I know that when, you know, Alfie decides to do his little potties in the house. It's really because he needs something more from me for sure. Um, so I've been bringing him every day. Um, Lorena said, Frankie is named after my dad who passed away five years ago. That's so sweet. I'm crate training her. Any tips on the potty training? She's been having accidents inside the crate. Um, Lorena, so I've got a video um, up on house training Yorkies. So I would definitely watch that whole video. 
And then after you watch the video, I think I could answer more specific questions. But I would say that if your dog is having accidents um, inside the crate, it, there could be some different reasons. Um, it could be that where they were raised when your dog was bred, it may not have been super clean. If that's the case, it can be really hard to get a dog to respect a crate, but it's possible. Um, the other reason could be that the dog is actually inside of the crate for too long. Um, little puppies really have to be out of their crates very, very frequently um, because they really can't hold it for long. Um, so I've always found that when my puppy was little, it really couldn't be in its crate for probably more than an hour and then it would need to go out. So what I would try to do is one, make sure you use a really, really, really good cleaner. So you get that smell of urine out of the cr crate completely. Um, I like, I have it on my, um, I have it on my YouTube. I think it's the bio clean that I use and it's really, really gentle and it's non-toxic, which is good because of course your dog will be sleeping in that crate where you use it. Um, and so after you clean it, I would say really start taking your dog out constantly to break that habit. So a lot of people might leave their dogs in their crates too long and then the dog will have no choice but to have an accident. And that's just a guess. It's really hard when I'm not like actively talking to someone. So I don't know, maybe you could tell me how long the dog is in the crate, et cetera. Um, but I would say usually if dogs don't want to have an accident in their crate, so it could be that the crate is too big. So if you read the, the dog training book that I recommend that everybody buy from the monks of New Skeet, they usually advise that you use a crate that's appropriate for your dog's size. So you don't really want a crate that's so big that your dog can go to the bathroom in the crate and then move away from it. So that means for a Yorkie starting out with a super tiny crate or perhaps blocking part of the crate so that they can't use the whole thing and they have no choice but to hold it. But that said, you don't really want to make your dog hold it for long because that wouldn't be humane. So you also need to bring it out all the time. Oh, Alfie, how do you get so, how do you get so tangled so fast? Um, so those would be some tips that I would have for sure. Tiffany, how are you? It's so nice to see you. Tiffany said, I just joined the live. Hello. Um, that's so nice to see you. And thank you so much for saying that to Kelly. I know we, I think we all can definitely understand that loss of a pet. It's a really hard thing to go through. Um, and it's, there's no easy way around it. You know, there's like, I think about it and I know I'm going to go through it with all of my pets and I sure wish I didn't have to because I love them so much. And it's, we, it's such a treat to have our animals for the time that we do have them, but then it's so hard that we don't get to have them forever. Um, Tiffany, I know you're just joining, but I was just telling everybody, um, I, I know I had told you that I was looking for an at-home groomer and the at-home groomer, her name is Maria. She just came for the first grooming session the other day and she was just fabulous. Um, she was so nice and gentle and talented and she loved the puppies. And I expected Lola to nonstop bark at her. And Lola really didn't. I mean, she did, Lola did bite the scissors. No surprise there, but she has no teeth. Um, but she was, I mean, everybody was pretty happy with her and they look so good. Um, it was like a no, basically like a no stress day. Um, I'm going to actually buy a little grooming table so I can just keep it. I've got a storage space here in my condo building and I'm just going to keep it in the storage so that she doesn't have to lug it because she's this teeny tiny little gal and I live right in the city. So it's kind of hard because there's not parking right here. And um, so basically I'm just going to make it easier for her because I don't want her to have any reason not to want to come and groom my babies because it is so nice to um to have someone that just comes in and takes care of them here and i just i just absolutely loved her my husband thought she was great too we were really happy to have her here kelly says izzy's izzy's name was almost teddy oh my gosh and they look a lot alike when i watched a video about your teddy it made me cry but also made me feel less alone thank you for the poem it really is perfect I just love the poem, Kelly. Um, when I lost Teddy, the breeder sent it to me. And I remember in the message, she said, maybe this will help. And I was kind of like, 
nothing can help. You know, I had almost like, I don't want to say an attitude in my mind, but I was like, what could help? And I read it and I read it before I had to put him down. And I was like, yes, this, this speaks to me. So anyway, it was really helpful to me. Um, the other thing that was really nice, Kelly, um, I don't know if you've been on before and you've seen this, but I have these beautiful memory bears made of Teddy's things, one of Teddy's things. And it's a little teddy bear made from material from his bed and I can just hug it and hold it. And, you know, it's, it's a really nice memento of Teddy. So if you haven't ever seen a memory bear, you can also look those up on Etsy. Um, they're really beautiful to have. So those are just my two little suggestions about loss. I feel, I never feel weird talking about loss because everybody's going to experience it. And it's, you know, it's part of life living in, you know, you don't live your entire life, right? I mean, you live your life and then you're not alive anymore. So I think it's good to talk about because it's a very normal, although sad part of life. Nicey's niche. It's so nice to see you. How is your baby doing, Nicey's niche? It says, hi, everyone. Kelly, so sorry for your loss. You guys are truly the nicest group of people. I just want to say I appreciate each and every one of you. And I love your kindness. Every single time I come on here, I'm just, I feel so lucky to be on with such a nice group of people. Um, it's like a very just like, it's, it's a fun way to chat and get to know you guys. I always love it so much. Um, Tiffany said that it's wonderful that you and the Yorkies had a positive experience with the in-home groomer. Tiffany, she was just so wonderful. It was such a good experience. Um, she was so happy and I was really blown away with, by how skilled she was. I find like usually it takes a few, um, a few sessions for someone to really get, oh, what stickiness do you have? I feel like this is a time of year where people are dropping gum. I'm sorry, Alfie, because I feel like I keep finding sticky stuff on the Yorkies for sure. We're gonna get these little leggies too. We're gonna get these leggies. Um, it was very cute though. She also brought a little tie for Alfie and some barrettes for the girls. Um, the tie was really cute, but it was so big on him and there was just no adjusting it down because he's such a teeny tiny little Ewok dog. Um, he has really just been loving, you should see how much he's been loving going to work with me. Um, now that he's getting used to it, I don't know if I can leave him at home because he just wants to go to work. And I think maybe the girls even like it because they get a little more attention at home. Um, but he, in the morning now, when I'm getting ready, he just sits and waits because he wants to go to work with me or wherever I'm going. He did get pretty upset when I went to the gym the other day because I feel like he thinks that he should have gotten to go to the gym with me. So when Jeff and I got home from the gym, Alfie was doing a little bit of something that I call scream barking, um, which we live on a pretty high floor and we were outside and I could hear him barking from outside. So I can, I hope that my, my neighbors are all a lot older and I hope they Maybe they can't hear it. Is it possible? I hope they didn't hear it, but we'll see. Um, Lisa says, how long did it take your babies to get their hair long in the front um, with Milo's being 10 months? His hair is still growing and I can put a ponytail, but he still has those little wispies in the front. Um, it takes quite a while because I feel like their hair grows at about the same rate as a human's hair. Probably, I think it grows at about a half an inch a month. So it can take quite a while. So when Alfie came to me, he had a mullet and I feel like it took like a full year for him to have a really great ponytail. Um, so quite a while, but it gets better and better. And um, what you might find is actually if you do the two ponytails like I do, Lisa, it's a little easier because when you do that little front one, you just grab, you know, some of the little hairs like this. And then when you do the back one, you pick up the rest. So um, that works well to kind of grab some of those little hairs, I would say. Um, Lorena says, I actually did buy the book you recommended. Oh, that's awesome. The art of raising a puppy. And it's been super helpful. I attempted to implement the schedule they suggested, but I've had to tweak it a little bit since. Yes, it definitely needs like, they need to go out a whole lot, Lorena. And I think like, if it's tweaking it going out sooner, it might work. But if it's tweaking it going out later, what I would keep in mind is your keys are even smaller than the dogs that they're talking about. So I think sometimes they have to go out even more. 
Um, hi, Jennifer, how are you? Jennifer says, hi, Megan, hope you're doing well. I am. And it says, so happy the groomer worked out. Bentley is getting his final shots Friday. I set up an appointment with a groomer that comes to my house in two weeks, nervous and excited. So, I mean, don't be too nervous. First of all, you'll be there. So that's really great. And secondly, just, you know, I would show a picture and be descriptive of what you want. Um, and also know that if it's close to what you want and not exactly what you want, you can just really nicely like say like, oh, the next time can we round the face a little bit more? Um, what I will also say is like right when the groomer finishes, your dog might not be styled like the way that you style your dog. So um, when even though she did a great, great job, I liked how it looked even better when I did the ponytails myself. And hasn't it ever been like that for you guys, too, where you get your hair cut or colored and they style your hair and you're like, I think I like it, but it's not styled the way you do it. Um, and then when you get home and you style it, then you know you like it. I think it's the same thing, whether it's dog hair or human hair sometimes. Um, Jennifer, I can't wait to hear how it turns out. And I'm really excited for you. Tiffany says, there are awesome circular shaped um, round grooming tables on Amazon for Yorkies or other toy dogs. That's so cool. Hmm. I mean, I'm going to order some stuff from this one company um, that I'm getting the grooming combs from. But if I like those better, I might get one of those instead because it probably doesn't need to be that huge for a Yorkie. That's a really good idea, Tiffany. Thank you so much for sharing that. Jasmine said, I'm glad you had those years together with Teddy. Mine is just a baby, but it still made me cry. I'm sorry for your loss. As sad as it is, it's really comforting that people can come on the live and share. I so agree with you, Jasmine. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, I think when, when people go through a loss, it's really hard, but it's harder if they don't have a community to talk with and to share with. And I think being on here and having like a very positive place to go is a really, it's a great thing. It's nice that people can just chat and be themselves and share those things. I really appreciate it. And um, I appreciate the confidence and anybody just to come on and say that it's such a nice thing. So really nice. I have to say in all of my live streams that I've ever had, I think I've only ever blocked two people, which really says something. There's almost always nice people. And one of them was just actually really irritating. I don't know if it was like, I think it was someone that was like trying to come on and recommend dog breeders or something, but really it's been pretty amazing what a nice group it is. Um, Lorena says she's not able to hold it as long as perhaps other large breed puppies. I've had to put a divider in her crate since it was too big. I just need to watch her all the time because sometimes she can. Um, how long, so Lorena, how long is she staying in there? Like totally honestly, how long is she staying in there? Because I think what, and I just want to say, because I know dogs can't say it, just because a dog can hold it doesn't mean they should hold it or it's good for it to hold it. So people do a lot of things like where they leave for the whole work day and they say their dog can hold it, but it's really not good for them. And people wouldn't do that. And babies really can't hold it for long. So even if they physically can, they literally need to go out and have that ability to go out all the time. Or I wouldn't crate train. I would do a play pen, fully, fully cover the bottom and just know that they're going to go on the potty pads. But I think you really have to know that puppies have to go all the time. So forcing them to hold it isn't good. You know, I think the dog is in there too long um, and you can't make it be in there too long. That's all. Um, Nicey's Niche says, my baby is doing well, learning from each other as well. I'm happy because I'm expecting a Dr. Dobius puppy supplements. That's so awesome. And it says my baby got the vaccinations and I heard excellent... And I found an excellent vet since we are in the same, on the same page. He loves natural things as I do. Same. I still have to fix Alfie's ponytail. Nice. He's niche. It's your boyfriend, Alfie. He's so handsome. He's a good boy. I know. I'm going to fix the rest of your hair. Come on. I'm still fixing it. And Lorena says, uh, hold it just fine. And other times, especially after meals, she makes the choice to go in the crate, even though she probably could hold it. I'll be mindful to take her out more. Um, but Lorena, does she go out right after meals or does she go into the crate? Um, that, so that's another question. So everything is also dependent because normally 
puppies usually have to go within a half an hour after a meal. So I think um, they'll, they'll definitely have an accident if they're in the crate right after the meal. And how old exactly is she, Lorena? Um, how many weeks old is she? Um, thank you, Nicey's niche. I think he's so handsome too. And Vi, Vi Tautis says, hey, hello, how are you? It says our four month old Yorkie has never peed or pooped outside. He obviously thinks it's not the right place. We have no idea of how to make him do it. He can hold it for hours when he's outside. That is such a good question. I mean, eventually, so do you have grass that your dog can go to or something of that nature? Um, my dog, Teddy, I will say it, it took quite a while to get him going outside because he so preferred the convenience of going inside. And um, I remember one winter day, I brought him outside and he didn't go. It was really cold. And then I brought him inside and there was a jewelry store right next to my home. And God bless Teddy. He started circling and he was going to try to poop right outside of the jewelry store. So I picked him up and brought him back outside. Um, I would say, I don't know, have you watched my whole house training video as well? Um, because I think if you're watching your puppy and you see it getting ready to go inside, I would literally pick it up and bring it outside. And I would just be outside until that dog goes. I mean, eventually, I think if it's really not, if you really want it to go outside and it has a relaxing place where it's not too frightened and things like that, eventually that puppy is going to have to go outside and it's not going to have a choice. Um, so I think you're going to have to wait your puppy out, but that's really funny. I haven't really had that problem. My dogs love to go outside. He's just, he's so handsome. I mean, the groomer did, she did the best job. He just looks beyond, beyond handsome. And I love him so, so much. Um, Isabella, how are you? Hello. Hello. It's nice to see you. And thank you. You said that you are in love with Alfie. I'm in love with him too. He is such a little handsome, handsome guy. Um, I got a, I always answer some of my longer questions that I get on my videos on the live stream and a woman keeps coming on. And I think she asked if I sell my puppies. No, I don't sell my puppies. They're my puppies. I think you guys definitely know that. Um, but I also always just tell everybody too, I'm not a breeder referral service. I often really tell people like a great way to get a Yorkie is to get a, um, a rescue. So I got Alfie when he was, um, oh my gosh, Alfie was one and a half, no, two and a half years old. And he's been with us for, I think about a year and a half now, best, best little dog. And, um, it's so funny. I will say he didn't look super handsome when I got him and, Look at this supermodel now. All he needed was a good haircut and some love. Um, and that's really what brings it all together. Jonathan, how are you? Welcome. It's nice to have you here. Jonathan says, hello. First off, love your channel. Thank you. It has really helped me a lot on my new, with my New Yorkie. He is now 10 weeks old. I am having a hard time finding a collar only for a name tag, not for a leash. Um, Jonathan, you can probably find a kitten collar for your Yorkie. They have a lot of kitten collars on Etsy that were that are really cute. And I would definitely get a breakaway, um, a breakaway one. But what I'll also tell you is if they have a harness, you can have, so my dogs have like little on their, he's wearing his right now, but he's got little Alfie tags and I got it from Etsy. Um, the reason he's wearing his harness is that we've been working super hard on his house training. And um, basically I just keep his harness on so I can run him out all the time. And just like in my house training video, I've been tethering him to me if I can't constantly be watching him just to make sure that he's not going in the wrong places because he and the cat are having a dominance contest in our home for sure. Um, Lorena says she's 11 weeks. I take her out before I feed her in the crate. And I have her wait 10 to 15 minutes, like the book suggests. Most of the time it's fine, but sometimes she goes in the crate before I get to her. So I think if she goes in the crate before you get to her, I wouldn't um, have her wait in the crate. I think like every dog is different. And if sometimes she goes in the crate before you get to her, 
I probably wouldn't have her go in the crate at all. I would just take her right out and assume that food moves through her body a little bit faster, um, for sure. Um, and I, yeah, I think an 11 week old Yorkie mine couldn't have been in a crate for an hour. Um, I didn't even get mine at 11 weeks old. I got them at, um, Lola was, she was 13 weeks old. So, um, I would do less than an hour or do a playpen. Um, Jasmine says same puppy as Vitautas. Um, that's our little one, a couple, a couple who watch you together. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. So our puppy is funny. He literally just gets home, like finally and goes on his pad. We will wait it out. That's so funny. Um, I think eventually he'll stop. I really do think that he'll stop. And thank you for clearing that up. So I know that it's, that's so cute. Thanks that you guys are both joining me. That's so awesome, by the way. I love that. Um, Tiffany asked, what Etsy shop did you get the tags from? Tiffany, I don't know, but will you comment after this video is up and I will look for it and find the lady. She did such a great job. She made them really, really tiny. And um, cause I just don't like big heavy tags on my dogs because they're so small. So they don't want really big heavy tags. Um, Jonathan, I got my dog harness from a place called Buddy Belt and it is so cute. So guys, it's got little crystals on it just so we can like really model Alfie. Um, it's really soft leather and it looks like the Burberry plaid. Um, I just love their harnesses. They're so, so soft. They're great quality. And of course my dogs all have matching harnesses because why wouldn't they? Where's my lols? Where's my, I know, I think it's not your turn anymore. Is it not your turn? Look at his little tongue guys. He's such a ham. Is it Lola's turn? Hi, Lola's. Hi, Lolo. What a good girl. You want to be brushed? You want to be brushed? Okay, now we're going to do Lola. Come on. Oh, wow. Come on. I have different voices for all of them. So, Lola. Lolo's. <laughs> she doesn't want to look. Okay, maybe when she sits, she will. She looks beautiful. Beautiful. I love how they look after their grooming. Sorry, I can only talk baby talk to my dogs. It's the only way that I know how. Um, so you guys aren't going to believe this, but these, for those of you guys that have not joined me before, um, I am still looking for a replacement for Skylar. So first there was one girl and she didn't work. And then there was another girl. And thank goodness I have Skylar to like, you know, kind of like meet with people and see them and things like that. But Skylar wrote me this week and she was like, um, I hate to say it, but there's some red flags with the girl that's supposed to replace me. Um, she said she was being super, super difficult about scheduling and when she was going to come over and then just basically hadn't done a bunch of paperwork that is pretty easy, like tax paperwork and, you know, just general stuff. Um, so basically, Skylar was scheduling her to come and train and she had said she had open availability to come and train to replace Skylar. And um, so Skylar said, let's start at 12 on Saturday or whatever day it was. And the girl said, I can start at two. And Skylar wrote me and said, I feel like I'm seeing so many red flags and I don't know what to do. You know, what should I do? And I said, I would tell her to come at, it would be really firm and just say, well, I need you at 12 and we're training. And um, so the girl showed up 30 minutes late that day with no, um, no call, no text, and then didn't bring her paperwork. And Skylar called me when she went out to do a quick errand and said, what should I do? And so I said, well, I could have the conversation or you could have the conversation, but I would just say, you know, I just wanted to find out what's going on with you. It seems like, it seems like maybe you're not really into this because um, you didn't bring your paperwork and you also showed up really late, but didn't let me know that you were going to be really late. And I guess the girl broke down crying and said, I just don't know if I can do this. Um, you know, I'm going to be really busy with school. And so that was it. And so anyway, she's not working here, but it was so funny. I feel like for me, it would be a dream, dream, dream job. And I'm really proud of Skylar because she had a really difficult conversation. Um, I think what's going to happen is my husband is going to have to be my dog nanny for a while. Oh, sorry, Lola, because 
we just haven't find, found the right person and Skylar has to go. And, and that's fine. I told her she shouldn't feel any pressure. And sometimes you don't find the right person when you're looking for them. But anyway, I'm actually really relieved it happened because I wouldn't want anyone that was not 100% into caring for the babies to care for them. So anyway, back to the drawing board. But the right thing always presents itself. And so the right thing will happen. Oh, Lola's just as mad as usual with getting her legs done. Um, Lorena, it's my pleasure. She said, thank you so much for the suggestions. I'll also check out the potty training video you recorded. I think you'll like it, Lorena. Um, and also the Iris playpen is in the links to that video. And that can be a great um, addition because just sometimes it's hard. I mean, we can't always take them out as much as we want to, but we also don't want them to have accidents because that also goes against the house training. So I think the, the playpen worked really well for me because there were times where you know, maybe I was at the gym and it was for two hours or something like that. And so, well, sorry. And there's our buzzer. Hang on one second, guys. You guys really get a real slice of how much they like to bark when that buzzer rings. It's unbelievable. I'm always like, please don't bring me any packages. Just don't drop me off any packages ever. It's so loud. Um, this says, guys, it's, guys, it's gone. No. Isabella says we have two female Yorkies. And we're excuse you. I'm talking right now. Yes, excuse you. No. Um, it says we have two female Yorkies and we are thinking of taking a male. Do you think it is a good idea? Um, three, I will be honest. Three is a whole lot. Isabella, if you want a lot of dogs and always to be doing dog stuff, then definitely get a third. But just like what just happened, they're so much louder and so much, um, more crazy when there are three of them. So it just depends on what you want, but it does get harder to go places with them and things like that. So I would write out the pros of getting another one and the cons of getting another one and things like that. But they are a serious gang. Like my husband and I have been walking them separately lately because it's so much more relaxing for us. Jennifer says, so frustrating for you to have to start the search all over again, but definitely good. You found out now that she wasn't the right person for the job. Um, I totally agree, Jennifer. It was funny. I always have like this momentary you know, disappointment when somebody like a, a new employee doesn't work out. But I, I always actually, then I reframe it. And I'm like, it's such a gift when you find out early that someone isn't going to work out. Um, in my dating days before I met my awesome husband, I remember I would go on a lot of first dates. Lola, you're being so cantankerous. Um, and they didn't always work out, but I think it's better. Like if people just let you know early on, it's so much better. Um, what Skylar said to me is she's like, I just got the distinct sense that she was going to just not show up one day. And I really didn't want you to be, um, you know, without someone like that. And so for me, I'd rather just have like a period where I have to figure things out and I'm a little bit shorthanded. Um, but I, my husband is here like almost always anyway, and he can help a lot. He's honestly not as helpful as an assistant, but that's okay. Um, but I, I'll find the right person. Actually, a gal that I met there's a vegan place that I go to pick up food from sometimes. And a gal that I met there um, actually applied for the job. And I hadn't really looked at it simply because I thought I had found the person. But she, I looked at it after and I was like, oh, I remember talking to her. We had, I think I was picking up some kind of like yummy, I don't know, turmeric latte or something. And we were talking one day. So I remember talking to her and I know I would have only spoken to her at length because she was a nice person. So anyway, I'm going to talk to her and I know that I'm going to find the, I don't want to say the perfect person because there's no such thing as perfect anything, but I know I'm going to find a great match and that person will be happy to have this job because it's a great job to take care of these babies. And they're, I just think they're delightful to be around. So someone should really want this job. And it just really let me know the girl just showing up at, I don't know, half an hour later or something. It just let me know that she was letting us know that she was going to do it on her terms 
and she's going to be hard to work with. And, you know, life is too short for that, right? Why bother? I don't want to. Jasmine says, our Herbie heard yours on run to the door and bark and he got involved too, ran around barking with them. Oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> They're so loud sometimes, guys. It is just too much. Um, <laughs> Isabella says, my, they're barking too. It, it, seriously, it's like such a gang. Oh my gosh, every time they press that thing, I can't even hear the person. I'm like, oh, do you mind leaving it inside? And I just like let them buzz it into the first door. But honestly, I don't know what they, I think he said yes, but I'm not even really sure. So, lol, I've got to get your little eyes clean. Yes, I do. So in other exciting news, it's not a Yorkie thing, but there is a brand that I've been trying to carry since during the shutdowns. And I've written this brand so many times. They have a like a wholesale contact inquiry form. And I think I filled it out 10 times. Honestly, I'm like, hi, I'd like to carry your product. What about your product? I'm Megan Graham. How are you? And oh, look at the cat, though. Look at him. What's he stalking? He's going to try to get her. Does she have a toy? Oh, it's not a her. So it's Alfie and he has the cat's toy. It's a little like tequila bottle. And I think he's going to sneak up on Alfie any second. Let's see what happens. This is exactly why. Yeah, he's wiggling his butt. Oh, and now it's my husband. Oh my goodness. Hold on, you can see Don, but your hair's up. Hold on. Hi, honey. Hey. I'm on my live stream. Oh, okay. Just, you know, it's fine. You can do your stuff, but just, you know. Oh, Lola wants to go say hi, but her, okay, she's going to go say hi, but her hair is all over her face. She just wants to say hi to daddy. I don't know what that, oh, I know what that package is. Um, <laughs> So Jennifer says, not dog related, but maybe since they just came out with a dog shampoo, but what do you think of, I think it's whey. Um, I don't honestly like it, Jennifer. I think there's a lot of synthetic fragrance. Um, somebody sent me some whey products and I honestly threw them all away because the fragrance was so, so strong and I get really sick from any kind of synthetic fragrance. Um, I like a spawn of silk or a Isle of dogs personally. Um, and oh, Jennifer says, welcome back, Jeff, just so you know. <laughs> That's so nice. Thank you, Jennifer. Totally appreciate it. Um, Lola, I've got to get your eye stuff out. Come here. Come on, Lola. So just as you came in, Simba was just about to attack Alfie. And then you opened the door. He was like on the, on the carpet, just waiting. Okay. Poor Lil, she doesn't want to come back and get, um, oh my gosh, that's a good little pun, Jennifer. Yes, I threw them uh, away. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, the smell was just so strong. Um, synthetic fragrance is just a funny thing. It's I know everybody just uses it like it's totally normal, but if you read about synthetic fragrance, even for people not like me, like I'm, I actually have a physical reaction to it and I get sick from it, like poor Jeff. He used a detergent when he was in Scottsdale before that smells really strongly. And so he had to take all of the clothes that he brought home with him out of our closet because they were making me sick and <laughs> rewash them with baking soda so that I wouldn't get sick from them. So I physically get sick from synthetic fragrance, but I think even people that maybe don't feel it right away, it's just not, it's not really good for you. And your dog can't tell you, but it's definitely not good for your dog either. So um, <laughs> I definitely would, I would say no. It's funny. So the company I was talking to today is called, oh, and so I, sorry, I got interrupted. I was telling you guys, but there's this company that I've been trying and trying and trying to carry for so long and they just ignore me all the time. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to try again. So um, I don't know if you guys saw, but I did a Rahua shampoo and conditioner review this week. And that is the company that I've been trying to get. And then I sent it to the company and said, I'd love to carry your product. And they did finally get back to me. And I think it was good because the review 
you know, kind of like brought out a little bit of my personality. It, sh you know, it showed what I can do. And also it told about my passion for their products. So we had a meeting, but I was telling them that I think it would be amazing for them to do a dog shampoo and conditioner because they do this amazing, uh, amazing, amazing work with products. And they have, they employ women um, from the rainforest to make these products and pay them well. So they're actually creating valuable jobs. It's sustainable product and it's super, super, super gentle. So I would love to see something like that um, be made into a pet shampoo. Um, because I feel like so many people are using fragrance every day without really realizing the, the health effects. Um, they don't really have to talk about it, but it, I do think long-term, um, fragrance can contribute to things like cancer, um, birth defects, all sorts of things that you would never think of because it's such a normal thing. Um, but I don't, I don't think that just because something is normal, it's healthy. Um, and I think people assume that things would be more tested than they are, but there's, um, sorry, Mola's eyes are really, Mola's eyes are really not so nice today because of the allergies and how high the pollen count is. And she gets allergic just like I do. We're like twins. The birds are just singing outside. It sounds so nice. Um, Lorena says, this is fun to have a peek into your life with your husband and dogs, real life. It's totally real life, Lorena. And it's so funny because um, when we're together, it's definitely like, poor Jeff, I'm always filming something or creating something. So he gets like kicked out of the living room sometimes. Um, Cause there's really, you know, we only have a 1225 square foot place, which is perfect for us in the city. But um, when you're filming, sometimes it's like kind of small, right? Um, thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, fragrance is a funny thing that I didn't really think about until a few years ago when I had my mold exposure, but it definitely can make people and dogs sick. What are you doing, Elfie? You're such a good boy. You're such a... Oh, the cat's on the table, honey. <laughs> he is obsessed with my husband. Um, Hannah, how are you? Um, it says, can Yorkies eat just dry packaged food and be healthy? Um it depends on the food, Hannah. I would check out a book that I really love called um, The Truth About Pet Foods. Probably not if it's most commercial dog food brands. She is great for learning more about, um, you know, what is healthy and, and that could give you more information. Marco says, hi, what do you use to clean her eyes? So Marco, I use this little comb and I I think I should have this in my links to my videos. I'm pretty sure I do. It's a teeny tiny tight little comb. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that I do clean out her eyes every single day. So if it's, you should clean out your dog's eyes every day or they can develop sores and irritation and things like that. But if for whatever reason you forget to clean them for a day, a lot of times to loosen up the gunk in their eyes, it's really important to use a, um, I use a paper towel and I soak it in warm water and I soak their little eye crusties so that it doesn't hurt. Because if you think about it, if you had eye crusties attached to lots of fur and you no oh lols, you're so hard to brush and you tried to brush them out, it would really hurt. So you just have to do that to be gentle. Um, Jasmine says 1,225 square feet. That's massive by European standards. And totally. And Jasmine, I, I totally agree. And I'm not like complaining or saying it's tiny. It's just um, like we love it and it's totally big enough for us. Although very funny, the second bedroom, um, which we wanted very much, is the cat's bedroom. And the other night I needed to sleep in the second bedroom because Jeff was really tired from traveling and there was a lot of snoring happening. Yes, there was a lot of snoring, right, Jeff? Just a, a lot of snoring. And so I went into the cat bedroom thinking I could sleep in the cat bedroom to get away from the snoring. And um, I went in and so first I slid into the bed and the cat was like head butting me and all excited that I was in his room and stuff. And then about five minutes later, Alfie realized that I was not in the bed and Alfie started barking from the bedroom for me. So I went and got Alfie, brought him back and the cat wasn't happy about that already. And then Lola realized that we weren't in the bed. So then Lola started barking. So I came back to get Lola and then Lola and Alfie and I were all in the cat bed and 
the cat just got really upset, Simba. And, you know, I never really have tried to be in his bed, but he really didn't like it. And so he was attacking me and the dogs. So then I got a water gun. This is how this was a really good sleep. It was like four in the morning. So then I got a water gun. And every time the cat would attack me or the dogs, I would shoot him with the water gun. And he was so upset. He was like, wow, you know, just running around and things like that. And finally it wasn't working. And he was, it was like, it was a war. Um, and so I finally just, you know, moved him the closest to me and tried to cuddle him and calm him down because he was in warrior mode and he finally did calm down, but the cat does not like us in our, in his room. So it's like, there's no second bedroom and it only belongs to the cat. So long story about our place, but part of it belongs to Simba. Simba, do you want to come say hi? Come on, Sims, look at rolls. Simba, come here. Come here. Let's just, let's say hi to everybody. Oh, are you looking at, Jackie's looking at Alfie. So imagine having this guy attack you at night when you're trying to sleep. It's like having a full-size man try to wrestle you while you're trying to sleep. Yeah. You wouldn't think you'd be so mean, Sims. Come here. Nobody would believe that you would be so mean. <laughs> Jeff, he's so cute. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, guys, I always love to see you guys on here. I'm just wondering if anybody has any more questions for me that you've been thinking about this week. Um, I think I am going to go because I'm going to film my YouTube video for the week. Um, and I'm working on a day in the life of my Yorkies video. I really liked making that video the other week. So I'm working on another one of those too. Um, but Simba says, hello. He, he got groomed today. The way that I groom him is to, I have like a rake comb that grooms his hair. And then I keep the vacuum on at the same time. And I vacuum the cat while I groom him. So all of my dogs are, and well, he's a cat, I guess, but all of my animals are very calm and very used to being grooming or being groomed. He's a very good boy, except when he's attacking me at night. But it was so nice of you guys to join me. And if you guys don't have any more questions, I'm going to hop off for the day and go do th some things with my husband. But I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. And please feel free to leave any comments on this video that you'd like to leave. Um, Lorena says, by the way, I bought the grooming combs that you recommended and I've been getting Frankie used to them bit by bit. I tell her to sit and hand feed her a piece of food and praise her when I comb. That's great. That sounds so gentle, Lorena, and I'm sure that she'll get really used to it. Um, as you can see, Lola is still a spitfire when I'm trying to brush her, but the more you do it, the more used to it they will be. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. It was really, really nice to see you. And I will be back on with a live stream on Sunday. Simba and the babies all say stay healthy and stay beautiful. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, Lorena. Bye, everybody. It was great to chat with you. Talk to you soon.